What's up, real estate photographers? Today, I'm gonna walk you through a listing that I just got back from. I'm back at my desk, and I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step through how I shot it and how we're gonna edit it, all the little presets and all the little shortcuts that I use to make this workflow super-duper simple and fast. Let's get into Lightroom right now. All right, here we are in Lightroom, and here's our first image. And now remember, I'm exposing for the room, and I wanna push my histogram right of center. So as far as shutter speed goes, that's going to all depend on what your histogram is doing. Get it right of center. Don't worry about, well, what was your shutter speed or whatever it is. Aperture, again, I'm on micro four thirds, so I can be down to um, F4. And also, aperture is also going to depend on focal length. I'm shooting at 7.5 or 15 millimeters full frame, so that's pretty wide. I mean, I don't like to go, <laughs> I would not go any wider than 15 millimeters. So... With that being said, even at full frame, you could still probably get away with f4. Uh, to be safe, I would maybe go up to f5.6, but really in that ballpark. And again, that is something else to consider. Remember, aperture controls the flash power. Ambient light is controlled by your shutter speed. So remember, if, you are if you're popping a flash off and it is, if say you're at one half power and it's not bright enough, Going down in your shutter speed isn't necessarily going to give you more flash power, but going down in your aperture will definitely give you more flash power. So there's been times where I just needed a lot more light. And so I will bring it down to F2, which is, I know some people are cringing right now, but that would be the same as F4 on a full frame because everything is a two times crop. The other thing I do too is I do pop a flash with every ambient layer. And if you notice this right here, I had some ceiling fan shadows, so I had to, this pretty much is scrap. I don't want to use this because you, that's the only other thing. When you're popping a flash with your ambient layer, you, you've got to make sure that you're not creating any shadows. So this is the one I went with, and I just moved it off to the side, or I, I was able to diffuse it enough so I didn't have any ceiling fan shadows. And if you really can't figure it out, then just point the flash away from you and pop a flash so it's not getting into the room. And the reason I recommend just leaving your flash on or the trigger on is so you're not constantly shutting it on and off and that can move your camera. So we're going to go with this layer. Notice my histogram right of center. And I bring the highlights down a little bit, bump those, sh uh, those shadows, and just so the ambient layer is nice and bright and evenly lit. Okay, That is why I love lights off because we can blow out the windows. The windows can be fixed super duper easily with your flash. And again, see how the can lights are blown out? So here, let's go to the flash layer. See how it cleans up those can lights? Got a nice clean window view. I've already done my preset bumps to them. And again, this is whatever. People are asking, well, what do you use for a preset? Just dial it up and make it look good and then create a preset over here. And then, of course, every time you're at a new listing, it's going to be, it. you're going to have to tweak it just a little bit. So let's bring these two layers into Photoshop. Now, here's where the magic happens. We got our ambient layer on top. Let's change our ambient layer to luminosity mode, and that gets rid of all that color cast. So now watch this. Let's take our opacity of the ambient layer and just drop it to 50%. So that blends, a nice blend. We still have natural glare coming through on the floor. Our can lines aren't too blown out. But here's the thing. What if you want to make those windows pop a little bit more? Just create a layer mask, leaving it, leaving it white on your ambient layer, and make sure black is selected over here. Get your paintbrush tool. I like my flow at 3, three to 5%, and I just start painting back in, revealing that flash layer underneath. Now, I didn't have really strong window pulls on this. The sun was blowing out the sky on that this side of the house. So... You know, it's okay though. My my concern is always does is the interior nice and bright and clean looking, and that to me is. So I'm gonna flatten this, and we're gonna bring it right back into Lightroom. A quick way to do that is Command S if you're on a Mac. Sorry if you're on a PC. I don't know the keyboard shortcuts for PCs. Sorry. Anyways, interior final bump, and that's all I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna again, I'm gonna bring this right to center. If it pushes it too much, I'm gonna bring it back. So. Again, people are asking, what, and, and this is the thing, you could actually copy these if you wanted to. Exposure, just a little bit, uh, contrast, I bump that up to 10 to 13, bring those highlights back down, shadows up a little bit, uh, 
White's zero, black's down to negative 43, but again, that's something I like to play with. Here's a trick. On your slider, hold down option, and you can pull this down, and you'll see where your blacks start clipping. So I like it about right there, and then let off. And I go through and maybe do a, bump the clarity a little bit. All right, but that is the finished image. And again, that is gonna be your fastest way, as long as your ambient layer is clean with no, sh no flash shadows, and then your flash layer is also clean with no shadows, making sure you're holding that light uh, straight up and down. Uh, just play with it. Just keep on moving it around, maybe angling it back, bouncing it off of a corner, some molding, or whatever you got to do. But typically, your only issues are going to be the ceiling fans that are going to cause you the problems. Okay, so here's another example. And here's something cool that I do. If the room is small enough, I am just going to do my single flash pop. I do this for a lot of bathrooms and a lot of small bedrooms. And I already have a preset called my single flash, single flash image. And that gets me pretty close. I'm going to bring that up. And so that gives me all my color correction. And my sh I boost up the sharpening in this one. I, it has my pro lens profiles and I do my verticals. Uh, make sure it's on Adobe Standard. And what else? Clarity is up a little bit. Blacks are down. Shadows go up. And then the highlights are down. So that's pretty much an even look. And that way, I'm done. I just do that one pre preset and I move on. And so we're going to flag that one. Make sure that we're going to keep that one. Uh, let's see. Here is an entryway shot. I've already done my preset on this one. And this is the flash shot. We got a nice window view. We do have this shadow right here. Let's test out other ones. And that's too bright. What about this one? And we got the hot spot. So I think I'm gonna go with this one and we're just gonna use the flash for the windows on this. So what I like to do is I just like to create a layer mask, make sure black is selected, and then just paint in, get my window view painted in. And I may or may not use luminosity mode. We can do this skylight up here too. And again, I'm at 3% flow. I just leave it on that. I know that might take a little bit of extra time, uh, but it is what it is. So and we can try doing luminosity mode for the, let's see what that did. Yeah, see, because of that shadow right there, it discolored the wall. So we're just gonna leave it on normal. And it's fine. Flatten image. And again, I love, you can use the natural light if it wasn't too harsh and it wasn't creating any color cast. It was pretty much soft light coming in through the ambient layer. So it wasn't a big deal. Let's see. And then we can just do, again, my interior final bump, flagging it. And then let's move on to another challenging one. Yep, here we go. All different, and I actually was bouncing off the ceiling because it is a light color wood. It, it does not create any color cast, but this orange wood down here, if you're not careful, will cause color cast. So let's paste in my initial settings here. Gets me pretty close. Now watch, I'm gonna do my auto. Yep, see how that toned it down a little bit? Let's see, we just try to pick off the ceiling. What does that do? Yeah, let's leave it on auto. You know what it does though? I can see blue cast, so I come down here to the saturation and just drop my blues out of there. Notice the difference if I look at the blue just getting out of there. If I hold that down in that back room there, a lot of blue cast. Because remember, ambient layer, that's a lot of times why you use luminosity mode in Photoshop because you just want the brightness of it. You don't want any of the color coming with it. But I like, if if you can use, like for this example, I'm going to use some of this ambient layer. And we'll try that 50-50 blend again on this one. We'll see how that does after we build our composite. And I'll show you what I mean. So we got the overhead. Uh, we got the flash overhead. Let's try auto. And again, I can tell it's a little bit on the blue side. So I'm just going to take the blues out. And then we have our... Let's see how this is going to look. That looks decent. Let's paste that in. I can see like a reflection. Yeah, that might not work. I'm trying to only use one. This might work. This might be a good one. Let's paste our settings. 
Maybe brighten this up a little bit more. And again, see, I was just fine tuning. Let's see. Because I really don't care about the ceiling. I can use the ambient light for the ceiling. I just want that back window. All right, let's try it. I'm just marking these with a one star. Okay, we're gonna highlight these, bring them into Photoshop. All right, so what I like to do first is building my flash layer. So we wanna toggle off the ambient layer and we're gonna try to blend these two together. Cross your fingers that you hope it works. Let's bring up the far room right here and we're gonna turn this to lighten mode. And then we toggle that on and off to see the difference it changed. I kind of like what it did there. So, can we use the ambient? Let's do this. And actually, if we toggle that on, that's too dark, so we can't be painting out anything just yet. We got to get rid of this light. We could try to fix it right now just by creating a layer mask and painting back over. That actually fixed it. But we're going to have to fix that hot spot with the ambient layer. So we're just going to leave it. Hmm, what do we do? How are we going to do that? Well, I guess we're just going to do a layer mask and then command I to invert it. And now we're going to do white. Why didn't that fix? Oh, yeah, we got to paint the ambient back in. Okay. Yeah. Now we're painting back in. I get confused because a lot of times I don't invert my layer masks anymore. But now I'm painting in the ambient. And I gotta put ambient wherever I want it. At a 3% flow. Probably doesn't need to be that. Yeah, it's going. It's going. Very nice and clean image. Looks a little hazy back here. That's where maybe we could just use the flash for that. And so once we get back into Lightroom, I will show you a track on if you got too dark of a ceiling there. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And again, my final bump will spruce this up a little bit more. Let's try it. Let's do our interior final bump. That brightened it up a little bit too bright. So then what we could do is we could take our uh, this circle right here, the dot -a dash circle, click here, just go to our brush. And then we can bring that down. All I'm doing is dragging with two fingers on my mouse pad on my laptop to make that smaller. And we can paint in the ceiling right here. And then what we can do is come over here to the exposure slider and just bring that exposure up. And let's command plus to zoom in. Let's see if we can paint. And if you repaint, it's only going to go as bright as your actual setting was. And we can actually feather this, the whole thing down. Let's see, let's go back up. And again, I'm just trying to brighten it up a little bit. That was tough. There. Okay, let's see. Could probably get rid of the blacks. Bump the shadows up again, maybe the contrast up. Mm, not too much. Let's see if we drop the blacks again. I don't know. I think that looks pretty even. I like it. And we're flagging it. All right, guys, let's do one more. Here we go. This could be easy. This was tough, though, because the ceiling, the way it was shaped, it really wasn't a simple bounce. I had to be into this corner. But let's see what our ambient layer is. Let's go to that auto and see if that cleans it up. Not bad. Pretty even color. Let's mark it as a one. I like that. All right, we got ceiling fan shadows. Mm, it's not horrible. 
Let's move this up. Let's try for auto, see if that fixes it. Definitely fixes it. Now, I'm noticing this shadow here. And of course, this hot spot on the window. But let's go back. I'm going to mark it as one. Let's go back to our. Okay, so we got a nice clean ambient ceiling, which we're going to use. So we're safe on that. Now we just have to figure out uh, do we have a repair shot for that window? And that's why I moved over to here. And there it is. So we'll paste our settings in, brighten that up so it blends better. I like that. And let's bring these in to Photoshop. Okay, so since we have a nicely lit, color accurate ambient layer, we're just gonna create that layer mask. Black is our selected color. And now we're just gonna paint in for those windows. And of course, fix that glare on the floor. If you really wanna fix glare on the floor, Without using flash, you're going to want a circular polarizer filter. I used to use those, and I just haven't found a good one yet that doesn't cause so much vignetting that it's not even worth having on. And most times, you can cut it right out with the flash. Now, if I wasn't using flash, see, I'm painting that in. It still leaves glare there, and of course you do want some glare. That's going to look natural. It shows that the floor is shiny, because if there was no glare, it would look fake. It just wouldn't be accurate enough. I'm going to bring my flow up to 5%. I'm going to be here all day doing this. All right. That might have been the strongest. I'm going to get that window view. It's tough, though, because the sun was on the other side of the house. So it's different than when the sun's coming in at you. It washes out the sky of the opposite side of the sun, typically, and that's what we're seeing. So now we can bring this layer up, and then we do a layer mask, Command-I to invert. Yes, there's another way to do that faster, but I've just been so accustomed to doing the Command-I thing. There, and we just paint that in, and we're done. Actually, let's not be done. Let's try to do luminosity mode and see what that does. Does that give us more accurate punchy colors? It didn't hurt it, so we'll just leave it. And flatten image. Okay, we're gonna do our interior final bump. Let's bring that exposure down to match. And to me, that's super clean. I always double check my verticals, making sure they look clean. No other mistakes out there. But there you go, guys. That's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions. I answer every single comment. And hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Tutorials are coming out all the time. Thanks for watching.